Church. Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. My name is Kristen Waldov and I serve on the staff here as Director of Spiritual Formation and Membership. Very grateful to be with you today in person and also uh, those watching online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have a few announcements to share. Thank you for filling out the contact cards when you came in. If you did not do that, please do that on the way out. Our top priority is everyone's safety. So thank you again for understanding. Uh, we're gonna continue to be in person in worship um, as long as it remains safe. Uh, but we ask that you wear your masks at all times in the building, covering your mouth and your nose. Thank you again for that. Uh, if you have any questions about what is happening as far as uh, cancellations or groups or ministries, feel free to call the church office during the week and we'll be happy to help you with that or you can contact your small group leaders and they will help you as well. So be sure to check out your worship bulletin. Uh, there are lots of announcements in there. Just because we've canceled some things due to COVID, there's still a lot of ministry, a lot of opportunities uh, for you. So please check that out, along with the next steps, which are the questions that we pose for you to think about and reflect and pray on during the week to see how God might be calling you uh, to put your faith into action based on uh, today's worship experience. We are very excited uh, about our Advent worship series, which begins today. Today is the first day of Advent. Uh, actually, it is the beginning of the church liturgical year, so Happy New Year, church. Uh, Advent is a very special season of anticipatory waiting, active waiting, as we wait for the Christ child to be born, and we also await his second coming. So uh, we're excited to go on a journey this Advent as uh, so we talk about Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And in that same vein, we are offering a small group in those same themes that will be held on Zoom, and that's Tuesday nights beginning this Tuesday. Pastor Tom is leading that series, so if you are interested in joining that small group, uh, please email Pastor Tom and he will send you an invite to join. Last call. Uh, to support our United Methodist women and all the wonderful work in their mission. Uh, UMW is selling fruit, and that is ending December 4th, which is this week. So last call to order your delicious fruit. And if you don't want fruit but still want to support UMW and help others out, uh, right on the order form and the link online, you can send it to Halo or Christian Shelter, and I know those folks would appreciate it as well. So thank you for considering that. Again, December 4th is your last day to do that. Finally, Salvation Army stockings are available in the Welcome Center right outside the Narthex. Feel free to take as many as you like. If you're not familiar with this, you take a stocking and you fill it uh, with items for uh, anyone from an infant to age 12, and then you put the topper on and you just designate whether it's for a boy or girl in the age, and you bring it back. Uh, we're asking that you bring them back full by December 8th, and there's a drop-off bin in, um, in the administrative hallway there. So thank you so much for considering and um, thank you for, for um, discerning where God is calling you to be most generous at this time of year especially. So let us be in worship together. During Advent, we are on a journey that takes a look at how God blesses each and every one of us with the ability to be transformed. The chimes of the clock tower bells in Dickens' classic A Christmas Carol provided a wake-up call for Ebenezer Scrooge and turned him from his resentment, fear, and isolation. Each week we hear the each week we hear the bells ring just as Scrooge did on that transformative night. The cultural context in which Dickens placed his powerful Christmas story was 1800s England, a time of great divide between rich and poor, something on which Dickens wanted to shed light. His main character, Ebenezer Scrooge, is clear as the story begins that the only redeeming value in his life is getting more money. He lives in resentment, fear, and the ice-cold, frozen state of watching out only for himself. God's economy, on the other hand, 
says that there is enough for all and that all are worthy of the abundance of life and joy, freedom and sustenance. Will we make change and move toward the richness of peace for all? Or will we continue to be chained by the poverty of exclusion?
morning. I'd like to invite the children to come up for the children's message. I know I have some friends coming from upstairs. I will head up here. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. Are we full of turkey and stuffing and pumpkin pie? <laughs> I've gone back for the stuffing, even cold for breakfast. That's my favorite. Hey, girls. I'm so excited. Are you guys excited? Yay! Come on up. My Olivia and Vicky and Amelia. It's good to see you from closer up instead of from way up there. Okay. So girls, ladies, today begins a very special time when we get ready for the coming of Jesus. Do you know what this season is called? No. No, that's okay. It's called Advent. And it's a time of watching and waiting and a time of wonder. And the one way that we can get ready for anything is through prayer. So we're, each week during Advent, we're going to start with this little prayer, okay? Life's busyness keeps us on the run. Can you run in place? Run. Good. But we will make room for your son. Good. The work of love has just begun. God bless us, everyone. And say, Amen. Amen. Good. Okay. Now, when we make room in our lives for Jesus, our eyes are open, our ears are open, and our hearts are open to the wonders of God's amazing love. Today, though, we're going to do something special. Let's open our ears and see if something special happens. Oh. Can you go, can you go find the, what's ringing there and see if there's something special for me? Go look. Go ahead. Oh, good. Can you get it? Awesome. <laughs> Let me see. What you get? Oh. What does it say? For the children. It says for the children. We're all God's children, right? Yes. So it can be, f children. you're a children. You are definitely a children. So let's see what's for the children today. Aha. What's it say? Peace. peace. Good. Our card says peace. And what a, a good message that is for this first Sunday in Advent. It's all about peace. And did you know there's different kinds of peace? There's like Peace on the outside, and that's like if your family's all getting along and nobody's fighting, right? <laughs> or if we're getting all along in the world, there's outside peace. But then there's inside peace that we can feel on the inside when we know, like from the top of our head all the way down to our toes, that God's love is always there to hold us and to comfort us. That's a special kind of peace on the inside. And a really good way to feel that kind of peace is, is breathing. Did you ever? Yes. Olivia says, oh. Miss Heather is so bad at this. Oh, this breathing thing, okay? There's different kinds of breathing, too, right? We're going to do a couple little things. So, pretend, I want you to pretend you're holding a cup of hot cocoa in your hands, and it's really hot. Mom just made it for you, or Dad. And you can't quite drink it yet, so you use your breath to kind of blow across the top of your hot cocoa. Good. And now it's ready, and you can take a sip. Mm hmm delicious. And how about, have you ever been outside making snowballs and throwing snowballs or a snowman and your hands get freezing cold? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, maybe this year. We hope this year. Mr. Harmon got a snowblower. We need some snow this year. Okay? Okay. So then you blow into your hands to warm them up. Right? Yeah. So there's those kinds of breaths. And then there's a special kind of breath that some people like to call it like a breath prayer. If you're feeling anxious or kind of scared or anything, you can breathe peace. So what you want to do is breathe in through your nose, really gentle. And when you breathe out, say, peace. Let's all try that together. Everybody breathe in and breathe out, peace. Good. And we're going to do it two more times. We're going to do one more breath prayer for the church. So let's do that one. Breathe in. Breathe out. Peace for our church. And then we're going to breathe for the whole world. Peace, okay? Breathe in. Peace for the whole world. Nice job. All right. And we can use that kind of breathing anytime we're feeling kind of anxious. 
So during this season of Advent, we remember when one little baby changed everything in the whole world, right? And it does not matter how big or how little we are, we can change the world too. You think so? Oh, I know you can, Amelia. Okay. So we're going to do a little prayer to end this, and it's a call and response prayer. But Miss Heather's going to say something, and when I, when I go like this at all of you, instead of saying something back to me, I want you to say, Sleep in heavenly peace. That's your response to what I say, okay? All right, here we go. God of peace, bring peace to our world. Sleep in heavenly peace. Nice. God of peace, bring peace to our church. Sleep in heavenly peace. God of peace, bring peace to our hearts. Sleep in heavenly peace. God of peace, make us ready for Jesus. Sleep in heavenly peace. Amelia's sleeping in heavenly peace. Is that okay? <laughs> and let's all say together, Amen. All right, guys, thanks for coming. I invite the Emery's up to lead us in a time of lighting of our Advent wreath. Today we light the candle of peace. Peace for those terrorized by inner turmoil or outer strife. Violence at home, acts of hatred, a ravaged earth, or a scarred psyche. We light the candle because we believe that peace is possible through God's redeeming presence among us. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from the thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, 
and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas time, but but a time uh, to pay bills without any money. Yes, it's a time to find yourself just another year older, but not another hour richer. He was sitting there making change. A creditor with a cold heart. Making decisions about people's lives. Will they eat? Will they not? Will they have a roof over their head? Will they not? Will their children live? Will they not? Will they go to debtor's prison? Will they not? It is a story born a long time ago and far away. Or is it? it? Still. We live in a world where the chasm between haves and have-nots, hoarding and generosity, privilege and oppression, continue. Will they eat? Will they not? Will they have a roof over their head? Will they not? Will their children live? Will they not? He was sitting there making a change. And then, at the toll of a bell and the blink of a night, his life was changed forever. God has has thrown thrown the the mighty mighty from their thrones. thrones. Are we ready for such redemption? What will it mean? Facing our fears. Forgiving ourselves. Compassion for others. Working to change tragic trajectories. Christmas is calm, forgiving, terrible, pleasant time. The only time I know of a long calendar year for people by one consent. See each other those who those, those below them as one on the same trip to the grave. Unlike creatures on other journeys. Therefore, although thou has never a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it's done me good and will do me good. And therefore, I say, God bless it. It is good to be with you this day. Um, As we get ready to enter into the message this morning, um, let us take a moment now to be in prayer. Holy One, on this Sunday we join together to worship you in song and scripture and sermon. As we enter into this time of waiting that the church calls Advent, we seek the stillness and quiet of a season that will be very different this year. In the midst of our separation from others, we find the joy of you, O God. 
In the midst of the silence of the season, may we find the peace of Christ. In the midst of the darkness of this time of year, may we find the light of the Holy Spirit. Open us up to what you are saying to us today through your servant and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, as we gather together for worship today on this first Sunday of Advent, I pray that each of you had a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving. I know I certainly did. It was good to have Bethany home, and her uh, boyfriend Justin came and joined us yesterday. So uh, we've had uh, a great time as a family just hanging out at home uh, and, and keeping things on a much smaller scale than we normally do. But we still have been able to interact with family and friends via modern technology, as wonderful as it is. So uh, I pray that you all uh, had some of that as well. Uh, And I want to thank you uh, as we were gathered here this morning. It is so good to be back with you. I have missed you all desperately. Um, (laughs) It has been a long number of weeks, uh, the first few of which I was nursing uh, all of my family in the Midwest. Uh, My mom and dad lived next to my brother and sister-in-law, and all of them had COVID. And so I was their, uh, their gopher, I was their nurse, I was everything they needed in particular times to make sure everybody had what they, they needed to, to get through that day and on to the next. And so uh, that was wonderful. And by the time that I left from there to come back here, um, my mom had gone back to work, my dad was headed back to work, my brother was getting ready to go back to work. And since then, everyone has fully recovered, praise God. And then I got to come home and quarantine for 14 days with my family at home They'll be happy I'm coming to church tomorrow. <clears throat> yes. But it's good to be through all that and back in worship with you just in time for Advent. Praise be to God. And Advent begins this week as we get ready for the coming of the Christ child with readings from Isaiah and from the first chapter of, of Luke. Now, we get to Advent every year. But how many of us really pay attention to this very special and unique time in the church calendar? I think most of us tend to think Advent and Lent are synonymous with one another because they are those quiet periods that come before the high holy days of Christmas and Easter. But each of these seasons is unique and different. They bring different aspects of our journey of faith to the forefront. So Lent which we celebrate obviously right before Easter, is a time of emptying. It's a time of stripping down, of of barrenness. As we take our faith down to its very essentials so that we can examine it, reflect on it, and recommit to the discipleship pathway that Christ has invited us to go down. That is what Lent is about, just in time to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus that comes on Easter Sunday. And so Advent, on the other hand, is about watching and waiting and reflecting on what God has done in the past, is doing in the present, and will do in the future. It is a season of contemplation that focuses on Christ coming. We wait for Christ's coming in a manger. We wait for Christ to come again and to gather all of God's people to God's self. Advent is about time. And Advent is about time in the same way that Lent is about emptiness and barrenness, about being in the wilderness. So time is the central component of what we experience during Advent. And this year, we feel like, I feel like we've been in Advent since March 15th when we shut worship down for the very first time back in the spring. And so this period that we enter into now feels eerily familiar and yet at the same time completely different because of the season and the year that we are experiencing. But this year, as we enter into this sermon series about the redemption of Scrooge, we focus on Charles Dickens' most famous work, A Christmas Carol. And most of us are so familiar with this that it comes as no surprise that the book contains not an ounce of music. Well, the audiences that received it back in Victorian times had to receive it with the subtitle, 
of A Christmas Carol in prose being a ghost story of Christmas so that they didn't get confused with a hymnal. That's what that subtitle is for. Because it was structured as a hymn. It tells a story in five parts that are called staves, which is Old English for stanzas or verses. And so these verses amount to a story where our main character, Ebenezer Scrooge, interacts with ghosts along his journey to Christmas. He meets many ghosts along the way, but the first stav, the first stanza, he meets the ghost of his old partner, Jacob Marley. Marley and Scrooge made excellent partners. Dickens seems to have constructed them as if they were two halves of the same brain, for Scrooge remembers Marley well and all that Marley taught him. These were men of the world, men of business, men who understood how to make things happen, get things done, and to build wealth. And their job was to help grease the skids of commerce by lending monies to people in need of capital, whether for business or personal reasons. In modern terms, they were kind of somewhere in between a local bank and a payday lending operation. And so they would lend money to people with interest, of course, uh, so that they could do something and hopefully make a profit and then return some of that profit to Scrooge and Marley. But Scrooge has gone so far down into this world of business that he has forgotten others outside of it. And the am amazing amount of money that he's made through this very profitable business, he does not spend. He doesn't even spend it on himself. Scholars and casual readers have tried to understand his motivations for anything other than hoarding or, 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 or clutching or selfishness. But I think Dickens is trying to point to that very flat aspect of our basest instincts. Scrooge is really the most selfish and covetous part of all of us. And the reason this story resonates so well is that there are a part of each of us that understands where Scrooge is coming from. Scrooge, who comes from very humble means, as many of us have done, understands what it means to go without. And so he's going to make sure that never happens again by hoarding and clutching and grasping and winning at all costs and building and building and building so that he never has to go without. That is Ebenezer Scrooge. And, and some of that lives in each of us. As we prepare for the coming of Christmas, there are times and places where I think each of us want to shout out that catchphrase, bah humbug, at something that is going on around us. Like when my kids start fighting at home in the midst of decorating the tree, bah humbug seems like a good response. The tension of the story is based on that bah humbug. As we see Scrooge interact with the relationships he has with people around him and in the world, we come to see ourselves act in much the same way at times and at places. Because Scrooge is looking at the world through a very particular lens, one that is focused on him and himself alone. And really, he's looking at the ways that the people, the possessions, and the things that come into his life impact him monetarily. He is going to weigh each and every interaction, each and every person, each and every thing on a scale that is counterbalanced with gold. That is what Scrooge does. Bob Cratchit, Scrooge's clerk, is only of concern to Scrooge because of the work and industry that he brings to the counting house. He cares nothing more for him than that. Even his nephew Fred 
and Fred's wife are, are only valued by the size of their bank account, not on the fact that they are family and that they are invited to love one another. The men coming to collect, to build a fund for the poor and the impoverished during this celebration of the season are nothing more in Scrooge's eyes than an interruption and a nuisance. He cares nothing for them because they bring nothing to him. Everything is about the value that it brings into Scrooge's life. And if there is not gold connected to it, it is dismissed because it does not contribute to the bottom line. We see this tension in our own lives, don't we? We all have scales in our hearts where we weigh those interactions, those things, those um, uh, industry, the relationship, the possessions that we have, right? Sometimes we weigh them versus the amount of gold they bring us. Sometimes we weigh them about the amount of prestige that they bring to us. Sometimes we weigh them based on what um, will result um, in that interaction. So we are invited to ask that question. When we put something on the scale to see if it's worthy or not, how do we measure it? What do we put on the other side of that scale so that we see how our industry, our relationships, our possessions add up or measure up? Because this is a real world and we are real people living in this real world. And if we are going to make it, then we have to participate in the world, the economy. And Scrooge does this and then some. All of this is in contrast to the scriptures that Ray read for us earlier in the service. That wonderful passage from Isaiah that talks about where the prophet extols the son that is to come and to bring a kingdom that elevates all people counter to the economy that Scrooge reveres. The prophet says, a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders, and he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. And his kingdom will be established and sustained with justice and righteousness now and forever. This passage does not speak of industry. It does not speak of value. It does not speak of, of amassing or funds or any of that. This passage speaks of equality and equity, of love and justice and peace and righteousness. This is what Christ brings to us when he comes as the son born again in a manger, in a stable. And his mother, Mary, as she sings this poem, this hymn from Luke chapter 1, speaks not of the world's economy, but of the economy that God brings and the way that God views the world. And she says this, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. From now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He will bring mercy. He will bring honor. He will show strength with his arm. He will scatter the arrogant, pull down the powerful, lift up the lowly, fill the hungry, and send the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to his ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary is speaking about God's economy the way that God values industry and relationships and possessions, that the kingdom of God lifts up the lowly, it gives to those in need freely, it seeks justice and peace, it tears down 
the haughty and the mighty and lifts up the marginalized. God's economy makes permanent what we often treat as temporary, the love and relationships that we have with one another. And it reduces what we see as important, the size of our own interest, our own bank account, to as unimportant and seemingly insignificant. What matters to God is not what we have, but how we utilize the gifts that God has given to make a difference in our world. It is a message totally counter to what Scrooge values and exemplifies. Mary tells us that that God and by extension Christ are interested in each and every one of us for two reasons. Most importantly, that each of us as individuals are born in the image of God. And our value lies not with what we have or what we can do or the gifts that we make or give. Our value to God resides in the fact that we have been created in God's image. And that image resides within each of us. There is a spark of the divine that has brought us breath and gives us life. And that is how God sees us. And because of that, God loves us deeply and passionately and infinitely. Scrooge has completely forgotten this. If he ever knew it, it has passed out of his memory, and he values simply what he can hold on to, what he can obtain, what he can feel and touch. He looks at the world and the world alone, and his economy is based on that material and not on the spiritual. We are invited to see each other spiritually and be reminded each and every day that we are valued because God loves us and created us in God's own image. And that is where we find value, and that is where we find recognition and reception and love. We are loved by God endlessly. And it's because God has poured that love upon us and that love resonates within us that we can in turn then love one another. To be lifted up by the Holy Spirit, moved by Christ who comes again to us and take that image of God out into the world and everything that we do. That's the wonderful gift of this story of a Christmas carol. It is, at its heart, a story of redemption, of remembering, and then building on that to bring peace and hope to our world. Let us share that good news that we are not valued by what we have or what we can do that we are valued because we are, and we are loved because we are, and that we are whole people because we are, and we are most whole when we share that love with one another and love and value each other because of that simple gift of love. Scrooge may have forgotten it, but we are called to remember it, and we will see Scrooge live into that as we move forward together in this series. So let us go forward in this season of Advent during this time of waiting and preparation into the world to share that good news of God's love for each and every one of us. Amen.
One of the ways that we enter into God's economy of care and love and righteousness and justice is through the gift of prayer. It connects us to God, it connects us to one another, it makes us the body of Christ. And so we pray for a number of things this day. I invite you to look at the names listed there on page two of your worship booklet uh, and be in prayer for all of those folks uh, who need our intercession. We also want to lift up the family of Terry Crum. Terry uh, was Mike Crum's mom. Uh, she passed away earlier this week, and so we pray for peace for Mike, for Laura, and for their family. We also want to rejoice with the Cropper family. Shirley is home from Johns Hopkins, and so we praise God uh, for the gift of healing that continues to be at work in her and in her body. We also lift up the following. Um, those dealing with the coronavirus and all its ramifications in this pandemic. We pray for our nation, uh, for um, victims of natural disaster, for aid workers and missionaries who are serving around our world. We pray for our military, past and present, for those who face war, terrorism, oppression, and violence, for those incarcerated and their families, for those being treated for cancer and other chronic diseases, for all who are ill or in need of healing, for those who are weary or lonely or isolated. We pray for our caregivers and healthcare workers. We pray for those who are ill, uh, uh, for those who are struggling, for the homeless and the economically disadvantaged in our community and beyond, for those who grieve, for our leaders, for church, local, state, and world leaders. We lift all up to the Lord. And so as we come to the Lord now, we pray that God's blessing be upon each of them and invite God to, to intercede, especially in those areas where we can do nothing. So let us pray. Merciful God, we pray for one another and for your church here in this place that we may be your servants and continue to fulfill your mission so that mercy and love and truth may meet each other here in this place. Merciful God, we pray for this nation and our leaders that righteousness and peace may meet one another. We pray for the welfare of the world, especially for those living in fear or danger or sickness. We pray for those who seek to be good stewards of this world, of the gifts that you have given, of the ways that we can support your economy here in this place. We pray for all to be aware of your Holy Spirit moving in this world and through one another. And so as your people in this place, as we come together in prayer, by the power of your Spirit who lives and reigns with us and in us and through us, may your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we all pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. that we participate in God's economy 
in growing beyond ourselves and reaching out to one another in love and care is through giving. It is in giving that we make a difference to one another. And it's a way to let go of the clutching and the hoarding to open ourselves to what God is doing during this season. So come as the choir sings and as the Spirit leads uh, to give your gifts this day as we share together in the gift of song. Generous God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us, and we offer our gifts for the sake of being your hands and feet as the body of Christ. Open us to even more ways to give so that we might make change and be change for the sake of our world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
And as we prepare to go from this place, there is a little Scrooge in each of us, yearning to thaw, yearning to love again. This week, may you be visited by a surprising peace that may surpass your understanding. And when you feel it, even if it's just for a fleeting moment, know that the miracle has begun in you for the sake of the whole world. And now as we prepare to go from this place, may you be blessed by our God who loves you deeply, by Jesus, the true gift of God to each of us this season and in all of our days, and the Spirit who shows up just in time. Amen.